I moved from Puerto Rico when I was around 13 years old. Game on, game on. All right. We were stationed at Fort Ord, California. My dad was in the Army. He was appointed as the advisor to the Urban Counterterrorism Special Forces in Colombia. My dad fought for this very same mission. We're going after drug trafficking organizations and we're dismantling them. So the percentage of flow that actually gets into the United States is about 90%. And so we only actually interdict about 10% of what we know goes into the United States. And that's because of uh, resource constraints. So we really have to pick and choose our targets based on intelligence from law enforcement. Instead of focusing all of it right here. I agree. We're spreading it out over everything and everybody's getting the support that they want. We have to go on the most lucrative cases really to um, dismantle those drug trafficking organizations. So it's not always about stopping the drugs, but it's about really picking your most lucrative targets. So you could put the global hawks um, one after the other, or you can put the global hawks here. We think that by building a stronger interagency team that we will be able to, uh, to apply pressure across the length and the breadth of the networks. Recognizing that uh, we may not directly touch the networks that are directly responsible for the movement of the opioids that uh, are wreaking such havoc in your state, but that any pressure that we apply across these networks will have a beneficial effect across the length and breadth. Our picture looks like uh, needles in haystacks of haystacks. You tell us what you need us to look at, we will shrink that down and we'll take that maritime patrol aircraft to get the eyes on and get that video and then get on to target and say, yep, that's exactly what we're looking for. Bail on board. Bail on board, aye. We're looking at a wide uh, area expansion of 42 million square miles of open ocean in a non-kinetic environment. So you have time. You have time to train, you have time to test, you have time to evaluate and debrief, and otherwise in kinetic environments you may not get the same kind of structure. Through those training opportunities that they get in the maritime environment, um, even though it may not look like dynamic targeting or those other type of mission sets, they closely mirror those. So they're going to use uh, boat fishing vessels, they're going to use semi-submersible vessels, and they're going to use the most expensive uh, built vessel right now is the fully submersible vessel, but that's just their way of getting more sophisticated ways to use conveyance to move uh, illicit either drugs or weapons or a, a combination of both. Um, that really says the enemy is moving forward in their technology and we have to keep up. We have a God's eye view of what's happening and then we want to take that God's eye view and we want to put that down to the tactical entity on the water to, to go get that thing and go interdict it. We share that picture effectively with the partners who are able to act on it and then empower them. And so a lot of the work that we do in training and equipping of partners is to help them be able to conduct that end game for themselves. And that, uh, that occupies a lot of our efforts. I think inherently we do have to share information just to uh, understand that uh, movement on water eventually will end on movement on land. This does not give near the scope of what's actually out there. And again, it's all about awareness of what we know is out there. You, you wouldn't be able to see the screen and, and it would just be in a mass of lines. You have every source from the North to Southcom AOR um, looking through um, all our partner nations in order to amass all that information together to create one big picture to, again, find those lucrative targets in those best case scenarios in order to create an interdiction. My dad fought for this very same mission to keep America safe. I think we all do that to some level, but at home when it came to the war on drugs at the time when they called it war on drugs, um, and my father was in the jungles fighting, um, fighting the FARC directly, and um, a part of just cause and uh, a part of taking down Pablo Escobar himself. For me, that's, that's motivation enough. <laughs>